Last question, and I think we're out of time, but uh, to Srikant, you did talk earlier about how it can be a delicate issue, slightly tricky to manage investor greed and social impact. What do you mean by that? Well, if you look at the donors who traditionally supported the social sector at one end of the spectrum, and professional investors like PE firms at the other end of the spectrum, you have uh, the following situation. The donors came in with the heart. Uh, professional investors invest with the brain and the Excel spreadsheet uh, which governs everything else. Somewhere in between, you've seen the emergence of social investors uh, who try to balance both the heart and the brain, and we need that right balance. So essentially, if one has to scale up the social sector, you need that balance. And therefore, I would say the investor who is greed I cannot wish it away. The investor needs his returns. As long as that greed is within limits and transparently defined, uh, transparently discussed, I think it's acceptable. Uh, because I think uh, the market-based model, if it has to grow the social sector, needs the backing of such capital to come in. And obviously, not every PE fund will want to reduce its required IRR for the sector, but for those who are willing, I think there is a big opportunity. Thank you. Now, I'm a, Sorry. I'm a journalist and I can ask questions forever, but we are out of time, so I think it's time to see if there are any questions from the audience. I believe we have time for two. Yes. Uh, my, my name is Raj and I'm a development professional. Uh, my question is to Mr. Vijay Kumar. Uh, government is doing a lot actually and you have quoted some very good examples from Andhra. But uh, not all the initiatives are successful of the government and actually if I would put it the other way that lot of government money is going down the drain just for the, for the reason that we do not have enough capacity building in the, in the first place. And I think that this issue is also raised by a lot of people HR problem. So that problem, I don't know what are the solutions for this problem, but what are the solutions with government? Are you actually doing some kind of monitoring also that where the money is going? Or you are just subsidizing, uh, just you know, kind of experimenting and uh, be content with the lost money? Because I have worked for one such project and that is good for me to quote it here. There was a, this tremendous initiative by a public-private partnership initiative called Rural Business Hub. And we actually, uh, under Ministry of Panchayati Raj, did almost 50 such hubs. But I don't think so that any of these hubs are today existing. Thank you. I fully agree with you. And frankly, I didn't come here as a, to defend the entire government. I have come here to to say what works in the context of poverty eradication. But I am very sympathetic to whatever you have mentioned. And I agree with most of it. Anybody else? Have, yeah. Yes, uh, my name is Ravi Shirur. Uh, I am from Stellabs Technologies. Uh, we are trying to provide uh, technology and smart system based uh, solutions to uh, verticals such as uh, uh, food and agro and dairy uh, for the bottom of the pyramid uh, uh, um, uh, customers. Uh, one of the challenge we are facing is when we are trying to build the, uh, you know, uh, the sales and uh, marketing model for the bottom of the pyramid uh, for people like farmers or small, uh, you know, uh, dairy uh, or a person with five cows and things like that. Sales and uh, business uh, marketing model, the traditional models fail, and we are not able to build a, you know, good uh, business model around it. Even though. Uh, you know, from a technology perspective, we can make it affordable, sales becomes a problem. Uh, have you, have any of you faced this issue? Uh, what are your uh, suggestions uh, from this perspective? Sure. I think the starting point has to be what kind of a collective you've been able to form. If you can't bring small producers in an organizational setup, then it will be very difficult for them to cross the various barriers. So there is a tremendous poverty penalty and that can only be addressed by appropriate uh, institutional architecture. 
it could be a cooperative, it could be a producer company. So you have to first invest time in building such organizations. And then the, your technology and other things come later. See, the producer companies have done it successfully. For example, there's a poultry company we had looked at called yeah. Sudna. They have done it extraordinarily well. Means uh, right down to, you know, small people where they give these uh, hatchlings, etc. So the producer company taking a lead and building uh, some kind of a logistic supply chain for them uh, is a great way for this technology to permeate down. I Thank think you. the other yeah. dimension is uh, a mistake that a lot of social entrepreneurs make. Just because you created a great product and a great technology yeah. doesn't mean that the consumer there really wants it. The umpteen examples of failure, solar lanterns at 2,000 rupees, mm. you believe it's clean environment, uh, provides electricity to non-electrified households, doesn't sell. A great example, uh, if I take Ministry of Rural Development, they've put in a great amount of money behind uh, running livelihood programs in the past in rural areas, where they're telling the kids, come and undergo a course and get a job at free of cost. I ran such a program myself and I thought people would queue up because you're guaranteeing a job at the end of three months of training. No one showed up. I literally physically had to catch hold of people and put them into the classroom. The challenge, two challenges. One, they did not want to be salespeople at a pizza hut because they had to commute two hours by taking a bus and traveling there. They were happier sitting at home and earning less amount of money. So I think one fundamental thing is understanding whether what you have to offer is what the person there really wants and then be able to create that motivation or aspiration. That person is not motivated enough to get into an employment oriented course. So a lot of it is to do with what I call in marketing jargon as consumer behavior. Great. Thank you. Do you want to add? Yes, Harold. If I could just add one closing thought on that point that it's a ponderous, in a, a, a quandary I would say, how can a country like India that clearly has so much there's capital, there's entrepreneurial smarts, there's, it's a first world human stock, and comparing it to many other countries, you say, how can there be such difficulty matching it with the needs at the social enterprise level? I think that's a lot of what we're struggling over. On marketing, I would say it's very similar. It's a very mercantilist, tons of expertise here compared even to the first world, and yet it seems to be a constraint on many, thing, many of these programs. My argument, and I think I'd like to leave this on a note of hope, is that You've got just about everything, including in the marketing area, you need here in India. But the, I think a lot of the failures in the past have been either driving it from the big agencies, and I can say that I used to work for one. Uh, it's probably true of government. It's, a, it's not a very good way to push out this from the public and the government and agency side. It's really got to be mobilized and run by enterprise. And if you can find marketing enterprises or the marketing functions of enterprises, even if that needs a subsidy, that is so much more an efficient way to mobilize what's here. And frankly, you would have probably misspent a lot less of the money in the past. So I, would, I think there's great hope that I, haven't, I don't know of many emerging markets that have as much of what's needed in this field as India does. It's a question really of organizing for it. Great. Thank you very much. It's always a good idea to close on a note of hope and optimism. So thank you to all the thank panelists you. and to all of you for engaging and for listening. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Malika. I may, if I may request the panelists to please uh, uh, stay here for a moment. We have small mementos of this uh, panel discussion. Malika, may I request you to please hand over uh, the small memento to all our panelists?